Muy buenos días, América Latina. Muy buenas tardes, Europa. Aquí estamos en otro capítulo de TXS World desde España por www.txsradio.com, la única radio de ciencia y tecnología en América Latina. Hoy tenemos un invitado especial eh, y además vamos a hablar de un tema eh, que probablemente poco se ha estado conversando, es cómo llevamos estas grandes conferencias sobre, con líderes globales a un formato online. Si recordamos, desde que se inició este proceso de pandemia, muchos, los, los grandes congresos y eventos internacionales han sido cancelados hasta nuevo aviso. Pero, pero, desde Suiza, nuestro querido amigo, desde, que es alemán, que es Frank, nos va a contar cómo desde el Horace eh, Organization va a realizar esta gran conferencia extraordinaria con líderes globales en distintos temas. Muy buenas tardes, Frank. ¿Cómo estás? Muy bien, muy buenas tardes. Muchas gracias, eh, María Pía, para invitarme. Es un gran placer. No, el, el gusto es mío, porque además, eh, bueno, pocos saben, pero la razón por la cual yo me había, de, había decidido extender mi estadía en Europa, iba a volver en abril, era por la invitación que tú me hiciste a Cascades, que íbamos a conocernos personalmente el 28 de mayo, y que el destino hizo algo distinto, ¿no? Sí, exactamente, y sabemos con COVID, ¿no? No tenía este cumple por razones claras, ¿no? Porque con la pandemia no se puede organizar un gran cumple. Y, if you allow me, I will switch to English. My, of my course. Speech, uh, you know, I love Spain, I love Latin America, but uh, I'm not really uh, trained to speak Spanish uh, anymore. Next time we do, I promise. So let me just um, continue in English, if I may. Of so course. thanks again for the invitation. And as you said, uh, Maria Pia, you know, um, everybody had to cancel um, meetings, uh, summits uh, of head of states, of business leaders. And uh, it was a big disappointment on the one side, but uh, a necessity, you know, because we can't really meet for health reasons. People can't really get together. And uh, here we are, uh, we at Horasis, we decided to go digital. So we are hosting our big summit next week on the 1st of October with close to 900 speakers online. Wow. Maybe the wow. world's largest uh, online event. That's amazing. Well, just to let you know, in my social media, I, I sent a link to register to the Horasis Global Meeting. And can you give us, our audience, the address of the Horasis Global Meeting, you know, the Horasis webpage where they can register and be part of this, uh, you know, international conference, online conference? Yes, of course. And, uh, you know, very welcome. Uh, so the um, address is just our company's name. It's Horasis, horasis.org. Uh, Horasis uh, means visions, long-term oh, visions. Nice. It's Greek, it's ancient Greek. So the idea to get together really is to look into the future and to jointly shape and inspire the future. That's the idea of Horasis. And we are going to have um, head of states. We have four head of states confirmed around um, uh, 20 Which ministers. Ones? Uh, we have um, uh, Armenia, uh, Namibia, Ghana, and Cape Verde, Cabo Verde, the small wow. African nation. Yes. And we have um, 20 ministers from various countries and, uh, and a lot of CEOs. And you have uh, former prime ministers and presidents like Michel Bachelet. <laughs> yes, yes. And of course, you're from Chile. And uh, I'm very proud to say Michel Bachelet is joining, uh, of course, in her new capacity as she is the High Commissioner for Human Rights for the UN. Exactly. Um, talking about the UN, Maria, we have a very strong link with the UN. So the event is held on the sidelines of the UN General Assembly. And a lot of the topics being discussed um, in the Grand Auditorium at the UN are being discussed also at Horasis. So it's a Great. strong partnership and it's all about SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals, and how business leaders can support political leaders to make it happen. And if we go back to the origin of Horasis, how you know was your idea to create this global community to discuss these kind of topics and shape the world? 
Yeah, just looking a bit into history and uh, you might see the legacy. We started um, 15 years ago and um, we have seen a need for business leaders to meet political leaders. We strongly believe, uh, Maria Pia, that um, only one group of stakeholders like business can't really solve the issues we feel in the, see in the world and neither uh, the politicians or the academic world. So we all have to collaborate. And uh, this was the initial idea of Horasis, and we are very much focusing on emerging countries from the beginning. So we are also hosting summits on China, on India, and Southeast Asia, and we are planning one on Latin America. Yeah, uh, that's uh, right. you know the new one, and we are in discussion with several countries. Chile would be a wonderful country to host it. Uh, you know, going to Santiago. We can discuss about that. You know, yes, we can yes, make it yes. Happen, of course. Yeah, you know, and, and um, yes, it's very, very interesting. And and uh, going back to the topic, how is this transition? Because as as you said, all the large you know conferences and summit they have been cancelled until almost the pandemic is over. Uh, so, but you decide to do it anyway. Uh, can you tell us why you're doing this and the challenge that means to congregate all these very Uh, VIP, you know, leaders worldwide, you know, and, you know, but online? Yeah, we, we shouldn't give up, I think. You know, the um, uh, current state of the world is quite gloomy. You know, the health situation, the economic situation, we're expecting a minus of um, 10% of GDP globally in some countries, uh, much worse. Um, and uh, I think what we really need now are solutions and joining hands for innovation. Technology is playing an important role. Yeah. And, um, you know, uh, the um, getting all these different leaders together, also startups. You know, startups are very active, but we have also yeah. very large companies. And, uh, you know, the meeting we are hosting, the digital platform, is quite uh, an innovation. Um, it's held on Run the World. It's a small um, startup based in the Silicon Valley in California. And uh, with this platform, participants can meet on the day. It's not just speaking, but uh, there are chat functions. There are even digital cocktail parties where oh, uh, really? everybody oh, can funny. go around. And that's like an, um, uh, a random algorithm. You will always be matched with somebody else and you can have a five-minute power chat. And I okay. tell you, Maria, people love that because you don't really know who's waiting for you. So it's really yeah. like at a cocktail party. It could be minister, it could be head of state, it could be a CEO. We got actually um, very famous CEOs attending, for example, Richard Branson, uh, the founder of the Virgin Group. But we got also CEOs of American Fortune 500 companies like the CEO of Verizon uh, and then emerging market leaders, uh, India, China, Southeast Asia, you name it. And uh, yeah, you should definitely uh, try out some of those cocktail parties as well. Yes, I will, definitely will. And also there's some friends of uh, Teki uh, uh, World, you know, that like uh, Carlos Moreira that have been already being this program talking about digital identity. So... Uh, Yes, it's very, very interesting, you know, the, the, the agenda. Can you please tell us a bit on how, you know, the purpose of the agenda, the main topics? Actually, to be honest, you know, well, the, the, um, the panel that Richard Branson is leading is very interesting also because it talks about awareness in a sustainable, you know, uh, economy. And can you tell us about the agenda too? I mean, the topic? Sure. Sure. You know, um, first of all, the meeting is a very long meeting. It's only one day, but we start at 6.30 um, European time in the morning to catch all the Asians. Um, and, you know, the major challenge of digital meetings is a time zone. So in the morning, there are mostly uh, Asians joining. And of course, um, U.S. West Coast, it's in the evening, the night before. And then we go until uh, 11 p.m. European time to catch again U.S. West Coast. And then, of course, we go to Europe and America Uh, East Coast in between. Um, on the topics, um, you know, uh, 850, 900 speakers. So we have a lot of sessions in parallel and also plenary sessions. And we try to cover almost everything, you know, how to envision the world, how to have a good start now um, after COVID. Uh, everybody is fearing a second wave. We have also uh, yeah, farmers. Here, here in Europe, a lot. Yeah, you know, I are, think Spain is already we're starting. We're getting there. Over. We're almost right. there. 
Exactly. And uh, to say, you know, what do we really need now to jumpstart our economies? And most importantly, how to include uh, minorities and the uh, disenfranchised people who do not have access um, to uh, to power, to money, to even digital access. There's a huge digital divide, as you know. And I think, you know, COVID is really worsening the situation of those who are not privileged. Um, right. So our summit is very inclusive. We feel uh, we needed to make a, a signal, really a mark, to say we can't really go on as usual. Uh, we have to redefine capitalism, for example, as a major session led by the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, by the president on inclusive capitalism. And, uh, you know, large companies usually um, are focusing very much on shareholder value, right? It's all very short-term yes. oriented. But we exactly. need um, stakeholder value where we can also include everybody, you know, and not just this, the shareholders. So, you know, those are some of the issues to be discussed. Very interesting. You know, uh, what you said about discussing and reshaping capitalism is also a topic very important. Actually, probably you know that since October, we start having, uh, you know, some social protests. And part of what we have been talking about the last months, actually, sometimes promoted with, uh, you know, for actually for uh, by a German economist that lives in, in Chile called Janet. Uh, so I always change her, you know, uh, surname uh, from Buldenbrot. Uh, and the point is that, you know, it's very interesting to see that the pandemic now has deep this problem worldwide. And this is something that now needs to be discussed, you know, globally. And about the uh, deliveries, how do you plan? I mean, to, you're talking about making change. It's very interesting and being inclusive, very important. And what are the outcomes that you are, you know, looking for after these meetings? I mean, in this right. interaction between, you know, the different stakeholders. Yeah, you know, the meeting is very um, outcome oriented. It's not academic uh, as such. So um, at the end of each session, we have recommendations and there will also be a report like a white paper That's we want to share with uh, the UN and also with um, major uh, governments joining us. Um, and, you know, your first point, uh, Maria, if I may uh, just reflect on this, um, protests. We have seen protests all around the world and right before COVID, not just now. Yes. Exactly. And uh, it started actually in Paris, uh, you know, with the um, yes. uh, Yellow West movement and then spilled over to even to Chile. Chile was a hotspot for that. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, Colombia people, too. Right. <laughs> Very <laughs> and, active. Uh, right? Go to the street and say, oh, you know, the elites are governing us. But what about us? Right. What about normal citizens? We don't have access to anything. We don't have access to higher education. And uh, it's totally unfair, the system, because the whole world is kind of governed by a clique. Right. And this was started in a way in Paris. And uh, some people say it's almost like a new French revolution happening, uh, yes. you know, people yes. shouting and, and going against government. And there have been changes in France and Chile all over uh, and even in the U.S. You know, the America is maybe the country you have to watch most because there's an election coming up. And we have seen all the protests in the last months, uh, including also the Black Lives Black Matter. Matter. Yeah. Right. And uh, uh, so we see that um, our societies are really divided. And yes. uh, what it's we want divided, to. divided, but at the same time, they're, we are united by technology. Because even yes. with the Black Lives Matter, you know, that happened in the United States. And then it became a worldwide campaign and uh, that had been, you know, uh, in countries such as the UK, you know, for instance, in the 30% Club, you know, they have already included these kind of topics as part of their diversity proposal and things like that. So uh, we're divided, but at the same time, we are united. It's very, you know, through technology, it's very, very interesting, you know. Yeah, technology is um, uh, uniting. Uh, you're absolutely right. And in a way, you know, our meeting now held on a digital platform is almost yeah. like a blessing in disguise, right? Because people can join and people can, you know, send messages to each other, including a head of state or Richard Branson or whoever. And uh, I think that's a good thing. 
um, in a way. But I think we have to go beyond that, not just technology. You know, everybody talks about the fourth industrial revolution uh, to say that AI is doing things much better and and, and so on. But I have my, my, my huge and big doubts. Uh, if you think about all the people losing their jobs with the arrival of AI, okay. Uh, think about, you know, uh, again, an example from the U.S., American uh, truck drivers. There are hundreds of thousands, you know, going from the east to the west coast. Once you got self-driving cars, all those people will lose their jobs. And this yeah. is just one example, right? Uh, and, you know, the proponents of the fourth industrial revolution always say that we will gain more jobs than we lose. But um, I have my big doubts. Uh, and unemployment will uh, will rise. Uh, and um, I think we need to to marry technology with uh, the global public good. Technology yes. alone is not enough, right? We need uh, totally the social concept. Yeah. Yes, I totally agree. And in some way or another, this process that you have just uh, mentioned, you know, uh, explain, is going to be, I mean, foster its adoption now with the COVID. I mean, probably companies... We're trying to, you know, uh, fire a lot of people and try to make process the most automated uh, uh, possible just because, you know, otherwise, you know, because their people could be in risk in this case uh, with the virus if they're doing their job and, and things like that. I mean, we are, you know, crazy days. and uh, oh, But at the same time, interesting, as you said, as a, an opportunity to shape the world in a good way and use tools as uh, science and technology for humans, not just for, you know, for right. production. Exactly. And finally, as you said, you're, and you're completely right. I mean, the fourth uh, industrial revolution just talk about production, but doesn't talk about humanity, what is going to happen with yeah. the people. We need actually, really um, yes, we need actually a fifth industrial revolution, if I yes. may call it like that, <laughs> you know, because marrying industry and technology with, uh, you know, the global public good. I think that's really the way to go. Um, you mentioned um, results before, Maria, and um, at our summit, we have a strong link with the UN, as I mentioned before. There will be a major session on the uh, 75th anniversary of the United Nations. We have an undersecretary uh, general speaking there, uh, Fabrizio um, Hochschild, who is originally from Peru, again from Latin America. Right. And um, he will speak with um, uh, three head of states on this panel. And uh, it's to celebrate um, unity and uh, multilateral thinking. And uh, you know, there's so much finger pointing these days. People say, oh, you know, the UN is just a big bureaucracy. We don't need it anymore. Um, but on the contrary, I think the UN has never been so important uh, as of today. We need to strengthen yeah. the UN. We need um, to collaborate uh, because a lot of countries build like walls, you know, around them. You know, they don't let in migrants. They are like a trade um, uh, disputes, um, you know, between US and China. There's a lot of populism and a lot of finger pointing. But um, we should give up on this finger pointing, on this kind of uh, Machiavellian mindset, and yeah. really join hands, right? And and to support and strengthen the UN. Yes, you're right, and especially for developing countries, because at least here in Europe, you know, the European Union protects the countries that are part of it. But, you know, even with the vaccine, Latin America, for instance, is, you know, uh, we don't know what is going to happen, when we are going to have in Latin America a vaccine. And for that, we are, we have to either be support with the America that is not going to happen because they already said that they're going to care just about the Americans. Uh, and then we just have China. And if we don't have someone to support these developing countries, not just Latin America, also Africa, of course, uh, you know, what is going to happen with these countries in all this process that is going to take a while to recover the economy, uh, to recover health. So it's very, you know, interesting that you are also doing these panels with uh, people from all around the world. And, and it's very challenging, I would say, because there are different kind of time zones that you have to match them, uh, you know, and make it work. So uh, it's very, very, uh, you know, uh, interesting. And and what do you think, in your point of view, about how? Let's let's think about summits and events of this kind of events, because 
you know, what do you think is going to happen after the COVID? Because, you know, I remember last year when the Climate Change Summit was canceled in Chile, everyone was saying, you know, maybe it's much better because then we are not going to, you know, consume uh, and, and, you and know, pollute, and, right? And pollute, yeah. exactly. So what do you think is going to happen the coming years? Because at least, you know, you, you are already, you know, Horacius is already doing the meeting online. Davos said that next year they're going to have a semi-presence event. Uh, and what do you think is going to be the future after the COVID? Yeah, you know, maybe there's no after the COVID uh, might uh, stay with us uh, for long, even with, uh, you know, the vaccine. And it takes uh, some time, you know, to really uh, come over it. Maybe yeah. a couple of years, there will always be cases coming up. And people will always be very cautious. You know, um, air travel uh, is down and will stay down. People don't travel, uh, you know, for intercontinental routes anymore if there's not really an absolute uh, necessity. And um, there's even like uh, corporate guidelines, you know, a CEO of a Fortune 500 company is just not allowed uh, to travel <laughs> yes, you're right. uh, because, you know, it's such a risk for a company. Um, so looking to the future, I think um, digital um, uh, is here to stay, especially digital summits, digital interaction. Um, so for next year, we are uh, we are planning, uh, oh, we are okay. hoping to hold in kind uh, meetings, but uh, there's also a plan B to say that, you know, we have to go on with digital meetings. Maybe um, hybrid meetings could be an option. I'm not so much a fan of hybrid meetings. You know, you have some people um, in the room, others kind of watch, but it's never the same. I think we should either go for in-person 1% or for digital meetings. Uh, that's my personal opinion. Uh, but, uh, yeah, in the future, in a way, uh, you know, when it comes to climate change, the whole COVID maybe was, again, a blessing in disguise for yeah. climate change because people don't uh, travel anymore. And, uh, you know, personally, myself, I didn't really leave my home since uh, mid-February. Mid uh, I just do, like, uh, grocery shopping, you know, to, to have something to eat. And that's it, right? So I'm not meeting people and, uh, you know, uh, we are meeting now virtually. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> exactly. It's almost like right meeting in person. And even, you know, both of us, we, we never met before in person. It feels like we know each other very well. And totally the agree. magic of, uh, you know, digital events that we know we can talk. And it's almost like sitting together. And, you know, I really want to try the cocktail, the random cocktail meetings. It's going to be, that is going to be fun. And, you know, and talk, let's talk to our audience about the meeting and then we're going to, we're going to have. Uh, next week to invite them to participate. So, uh, you know, if you want to, whatever you want to express to them so they can get an idea. Right. I mean, I think it's a, a great opportunity. So, because it's good, and, you know, this kind of event open, I mean, it's very, at least from, uh, you know, common person, uh, I think to have, to be able to hear all these insights, it's an amazing opportunity to anyone. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, absolutely para todos. So, bienvenido. <laughs> so, you're all very welcome um, to join. And um, it will be, of course, uh, a serious meeting, but also a lot of fun, you know, meeting other like minded people um, online. It's definitely um, a new experience. Um, it's a long meeting, so I, uh, uh, I, you know, recommend to have a lot of bottles of water around you, some food, and to spend <laughs> as much as the time as you can, um, and um, yeah, and uh, to be there and and to be active. You can always um, send messages to everybody via chat function. You can contact. You can do networking, and uh, yeah, that's a bit the. Uh, the spirit of the meeting. So again, uh, welcome to join and uh, let's meet uh, next week at uh, the Horace's Extraordinary Meeting on 1st of October. Excellent. And uh, a part of Richard Branson and the President, anyone or any panel that you could highly recommend to our audience? Um, you know, um, the Chilean uh, president, Michel Bachelet, is speaking in the opening plenary at um, uh, 9.30. And right after, there's another interesting plenary with uh, a royal. We have um, Princess, um, Her, um, uh, Highness, uh, uh, Her Royal Highness, Princess Merte Louise from Norway. And oh, uh, you know, the Princess, Her Excellency, is, is an, you know, an amazing character very much uh, down to earth and um, we had her before at an in-person meeting and this would be a very worthwhile session to join. 
Excellent. And, and also, you know, there's a panel that is going to be about Latin America. Uh, there's going to be... With you speaking. Highly, re highly recommended. <laughs> Yes. Uh, yes. And well, and actually, just because inviting to all the audience to to talk about these topics, because you know, and I have a different perspective, because sometimes when you are in the country and when you have been facing a lot of situation, you cannot, uh, you know, it's good to have another point of view of what is happening and how things are going to evolve, and uh, you know. So well, yes. Yeah, so I recommend the Latin American. But, and, and also the one about, uh, you know, how technology is going to, you know, help the, you know, track tracing and things regarding with ID, real identity, because there are hard topics that has to do with our rights. And, you know, the audience know that are part of the topics that I foster the people to be very proactive on, you know, asking their private and privacy, you know, private uh, privacy uh, back in their hands, especially. I don't know, Frank, if you had the opportunity to watch the documental uh, in Netflix about um, the, the, the dilemma, dilemma de las redes sociales that talks about how Facebook and Amazon and all these companies use our data to change our consumer behavior. Yeah, I, I heard about it. I didn't watch it, and uh, and you're right. And uh, I think we really need um, a human face to technology. And uh, let me just um, conclude by saying that, um, you know, globalization is here to stay. It has to be a very inclusive globalization. And also multilateral thinking is here to stay. I think we have to think positive. We have to kind of move away from this division of society, from all the negative thinking. And we have to remain positive. So um, You're right. Good point. Very important point. Remain positive. Do you want to say goodbye to our audience in Spanish? Yeah, so uh, all, <laughs> now we talk <probably> again. <laughs> bueno, hasta la próxima vez. Uh, un gran placer. Uh, hasta la próxima semana en el gran cumbre de Horaces. Muchísimas gracias. Muchas gracias a ti, Frank, y muchas gracias a toda nuestra audiencia por habernos acompañado para conocer un poco más del Horaces Extraordinary Meeting que se va a realizar el próximo primero de octubre. Eh, a todos los llamamos a registrarse y a conocer un poco más cómo piensan estos grandes líderes eh, sobre distintas temáticas en www.oracis.org. Hasta la próxima semana. Hasta la próxima. <risa>